Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.5.2, respiration from the AQA A-level biology specification. So let's start with an overview of what we've got to know. Why do we even need respiration in the first place? Well, respiration is needed to produce adenosine triphosphate, ATP, a molecule that acts as a hugely important energy source within cells. To recap the functions of ATP within organisms, just follow the link to my video on ATP top right. So, as you probably already know, there are two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. When answering questions in exams, by the way, never just say respiration, always be specific and state whether the respiration you are talking about is aerobic or anaerobic. So both types of respiration have one step in common, and this step is glycolysis. So we'll start with an explanation of this. Then we will consider what happens when not enough oxygen is available and anaerobic respiration kicks in. If enough oxygen is available, respiration is aerobic, and we will then cover the different stages that make up the rest of aerobic respiration. This will include us covering stages such as the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Finally, we should know that breakdown products of lipids and amino acids may also be used as respiratory substrates that can enter the Krebs cycle. Before we start, it's worth mentioning that it is very useful to learn the diagrams which I'll be showing off by heart, whilst also taking note of the number of carbon atoms present in each compound, and I will always show this in brackets after the name of each compound on each diagram. So, as just mentioned, the first stage in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration is the same. This stage is known as glycolysis and occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. First, glucose is converted to glucose phosphate. The phosphate comes from the conversion of ATP into ADP and PI. When this is repeated, a second phosphate is added to the molecule and the glucose phosphate splits into two triosphosphate or TP molecules. Then the two TP molecules are converted into two pyruvate molecules. This is done via a redox reaction where TP is oxidized and NAD is reduced. Note that for these types of questions, if asked why something is oxidized or reduced, the mark scheme wants you to refer to species gaining or losing hydrogen atoms. So in this case here, you would have to state that TP is oxidized because it loses a hydrogen atom and NAD is reduced as it gains a hydrogen atom. This might be a bit confusing for those chemists amongst you, and I explained this in more detail in my previous video on photosynthesis, which you can find by just following the link top right. So to go back to our reaction, two TP molecules are converted to two pyruvate molecules via a redox reaction with two NAD molecules, and also the reaction of four ADP molecules with four phosphate ions to form four ATP molecules. Be careful not to confuse NAD with NADP, which is the compound involved in photosynthesis. So overall, in glycolysis, we started off with glucose, two ATP and two NAD molecules, and we are left with two pyruvate molecules, four ATP and two NADH molecules. So what happens next? Well, if we have sufficient oxygen, the pyruvate molecules are actively transported into the matrix of mitochondria for aerobic respiration. If insufficient oxygen is available, we have anaerobic respiration and the reaction will continue in the cytoplasm. So let's start off with anaerobic respiration. These stages all take place in the cytoplasm of cells. In animals, the pyruvate that was produced from glucose in glycolysis is converted to lactate in a redox reaction with NADH. Pyruvate is reduced as it gains a hydrogen atom and NADH is oxidized as it loses a hydrogen atom. This regenerates NAD, which can then be fed back into glycolysis so glycolysis can continue, meaning that ATP can still be produced. However, as you'll see later, the amount of ATP produced in anaerobic respiration is much smaller than that produced in aerobic respiration, making anaerobic respiration an inefficient way of producing ATP in the long term. The lactate produced in anaerobic respiration must also be removed by reacting with oxygen, as the buildup of lactate can damage cells. In plants and yeast, we have a similar principle. First, pyruvate is converted to ethanol, 
we produce CO2 in the process, and then the ethanol is converted to ethanol in, again, a redox reaction that converts NADH to NAD. As before, it is the NADH that is oxidized and ethanol is reduced. As in animals, the NAD is then fed back into glycolysis so that glycolysis can continue and ATP can still be produced. So that was anaerobic respiration. But what happens if we have sufficient oxygen available? Then we have a series of stages that occur in aerobic respiration. The first is the link reaction, which occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. Here, the pyruvate loses a carbon as CO2 and is then converted to a two carbon acetate via a redox reaction with NAD. NAD is reduced as it gains a hydrogen atom and pyruvate is oxidized. The acetate then reacts with coenzyme A to form acetyl coenzyme A. So overall, pyruvate, coenzyme A and NAD enter the link reaction and we are left with acetyl coenzyme A, CO2 which is excreted and NADH. Note, however, that this shows the series of reaction for one pyruvate molecule. Given that in glycolysis we produce two pyruvate molecules, the link reaction would occur twice per glycolysis. Next we have the Krebs cycle, which, like the link reaction, also occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. First, acetyl coenzyme A reacts with a four carbon compound to produce a six carbon compound citrate. A series of redox reactions in the matrix then produces two CO2 molecules, three NADH molecules, one FADH2 molecule, and one ATP molecule. In this process, the four carbon compound is regenerated, as is coenzyme A, which returns to the link reaction to react with a two carbon acetate again. The final stage in aerobic respiration is oxidative phosphorylation. This occurs at the inner mitochondrial membrane and the intermembrane space. First, hydrogen atoms are released from reduced coenzymes NADH and FADH2. The hydrogen atoms then split into hydrogen ions and electrons. The electrons begin moving down the electron transport chain. The energy lost by electrons at each carrier is used to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space via a proton pump. This creates a favorable concentration gradient for the diffusion of hydrogen ions into the matrix via ATP synthase, causing it to spin. This catalyzes the reaction between ADP and PI to form ATP. Remember, as in photosynthesis, the process of ATP being produced by electrons moving down an electron transport chain and the pumping of hydrogen ions and their diffusion through ATP synthase, all of this together is known as the chemiosmotic theory. Finally, oxygen combines with hydrogen ions and electrons from the electron transport chain to form water. Overall, in aerobic respiration, 38 ATP molecules are produced, 34 of which come from this final stage of oxidative phosphorylation. So why is oxygen so important? In exams, this is a fairly standard answer which you have to learn. You should state that oxygen is the final electron acceptor. This is your key word, electron acceptor. Oxygen accepts hydrogen ions and low energy electrons to form water. If this didn't happen, the electron transport chain would stop, meaning that there would be no pumping of hydrogen ions. That would also mean no maintained concentration gradient of hydrogen ions, resulting in no diffusion of hydrogen ions through ATP synthase, meaning that no ATP would be produced. Also, lots of hydrogen ions building up would create an acidic environment, damaging cells. Lots of electrons being present also would interfere with the tertiary structure of proteins. Overall, if insufficient oxygen is present, respiration is stopped all the way back to glycolysis. This is because we need to remove hydrogen atoms from NADH in oxidative phosphorylation to produce NAD, which is needed for glycolysis to continue. Therefore, if insufficient oxygen is available, we instead respire anaerobically so that NAD can continue to be produced. Finally, the spec also wants us to know that lipids and amino acids may be broken down into products that can also enter the Krebs cycle. Great, so that would be the spec covered. We've covered glycolysis as well as anaerobic respiration in animals, plants and fungi, 
as well as how, if respiration is aerobic, pyruvate is actively transported into the mitochondrial matrix. We then covered the following stages in aerobic respiration, including the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Finally, we've considered that other respiratory substrates, such as the breakdown products of lipids and amino acids, may also enter the Krebs cycle. That'll be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time, we'll be looking at energy and ecosystems.